Hi, YouTube. Sometimes I see this bad habit in my students. Let's talk about how and when to mute your guitar strings. My name's Lindy Day. I'm a touring professional and I'm a music teacher. So this is actually an advanced tactic because it's more about mindfulness than about technical work. I don't see this often, but about maybe like 15% of my students will actually mute the guitar with their hand like this while they're in between, while they're switching chords. This is technically a concept called rhythmic strumming, and it's not wrong and it's not bad. Let me show you how it looks when you use it the right way. So it's got a purpose and it's got a place, it's fun. It's actually one of my favorite techniques. But when you do a technique because you lack the skill to do another technique, then that's a problem. If rhythmic strumming is the only thing you can do, we gotta work on that. Here's three ways to mute your strings. Way number one is actually what I demonstrated. That is a way to mute your strings and there's nothing wrong with it. Moderation though. If you use this skill, you should be using it intentionally, not because you can't do the other ways. It doesn't work with every chord, some open chords it won't work for, but it's awesome. I want you to do this. Take your pointer finger. Let's lay it down across the second fret of the guitar. Don't press down, this is not a bar chord. You're just gently laying your finger on the strings. The strings themselves should not actually lower towards the frets. With your finger just laying on top of the strings, I want you to get this sound. This technique has a lot of names. I'm gonna call it a mute, M-U-T-E, for right now. Then I want you to play a D major chord. Once you're done playing the chord, I actually want you to use the same technique. My fingers are in the shape of the D chord, but they're ac actually lifted up, so I'm not applying any pressure. My fingers are just gently floating right on top of the strings, so I get this sound. Well, that's the open D string, but then I get... Watch this. I'm gonna play the chord, then I'm gonna go back to lifting the fingers up, and the strings themselves will just stop vibrating. It's an advanced way to mute your strings, but that is one way to mute your strings. Obviously, the open strings will still ring out. So let me give you another example, the A minor chord. You can also do this here, but we've got this high E string and the low A string ringing out, like that. So what'll happen is I'll play the chord, lift up the A minor, the two open strings are still ringing. There's a way around that though. And again, this is pretty advanced. What I'll do is I'll actually take my fingers and I will roll them. So this is te technically improper posture. And what I'm doing when I roll it is I'm just touching, I'm just grazing that high E string so it stops vibrating. So real slow, I'm gonna play the A minor chord. Lift up those fingers so these three strings are done. Let's take care of this high E string, roll the fingers off. So all together, I'm going to do it faster. Lift up, E string. If you can do those three steps together, you can mute the A minor chord with your left hand. Right? There's another way to do it. I mean, if you wanted to make it more simplified, you could also do this. Play the A minor chord. Oh my gosh, my pinky's hanging out. My pinky's not doing anything. The pinky has a job to do. You can also do this. right? Like you thought push-ups were hard, just isolate that pinky to do that. But that's another way to mute your strings. We'll call that the third way. Now, if you're doing something like funk strumming, like bar chords, it's a little easier. Right? And that is another way to mute the strings. I'm pressing down and then I'm real gently lifting up, but I'm still strumming. Down. You can master that skill. Oh my god. You will have so many options to mute your strings. It's a very advanced technique to study how you end your notes. There's actually a word for this. Uh, not quite a word. Okay, so decay, attack and decay. When you attack a note, attack is the word we use as guitarists and musicians. That's the word we use to trigger a note. I could do a whole lesson on attack, but I won't do it right now. I attacked, which is just fun to say, I attacked that note with my pointer finger right there. Nice, big, strong, boom. 
the decay is the other side of the note. The decay is how the note fades away or how the note ends. If you're into mixing, mastering, any type of your music, you'll recognize that word, usually from software. But honestly, us as guitarists, us as musicians need to know that information too. How we end a note is important. So let's just take this, this idea away from chords for a second. Let's just end one single note cleanly. Right? So it was like attack. The decay was very sharp and fast. It was just boom. It just ended. And I did that by lifting up my finger the same exact way I had you do the D chord and then lift up to get that sound. The single note triggered or attacked. I attacked the note is how you would say it, which is so much fun to say. I attacked the note. I end the note by lifting up this finger and just making the string stop vibrating. That is not the only choice we have as musicians. You can end a note any way you want. What if I slid off the note? I'm going to start a little higher, right? Nice little descending slide. What about some vibrato and then fade into nothingness? That's a longer decay with a vibrato on it. Fades. Well, kind of. Um, so just keep in mind, there are more, there is more than one way to end your single notes. Just be mindful. There's no right or wrong answer to this. It's really whatever you choose at this point. As long as you're producing the sound that you want to hear, then it's correct. As long as you're not giving yourself carpal tunnel syndrome as well. Let's just throw that in there. Okay, anyways, very last way I will show you is this thing. And all I did is I took all my fingers this time and I just threw them down on the strings of the guitar. I am not squeezing down, I'm not pressing down. The goal here is to have the strings stay above the frets. We're talking like no pressure. No pressure. My God, that's a good mindset to have, right? So if you wanted to practice, you could do this. One, two, three, mute. One, two, three, mute. One, two, three, mute. And all I'm trying to say is for like those 15% of students that get into the habit of doing this, that's fine. And that is absolutely a way that exists. But I want you to be mindful. If you want that in there, that should be something you choose to do. Not because it's just a habit. Do you see what I'm saying? So don't think about this as wrong or incorrect, because it's not. It's just one tool that you have to use in your playing to design your playing the way you want to design your playing. Thanks for watching, guys. I teach 60-second lessons on TikTok and Instagram. If you enjoy these lessons, please hit the follow. Also, feel free to suggest a lesson in the comments. Thanks for all your support. I'll see you next time.